Greetings, Kerbonauts. You have been recruited by the Kerbal Space Administration to explore the frontier and discover what is going on with the Gateway Project in the alternate dimension. Or maybe it's just Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Bitch, and this is episode number eight of the Gateway Project. And in the last episode, we had some orbital debris, and Bill will not allow our project to continue as long as that debris is still up there. Uh, that was the stage that we had sent up that P6 truss on, and we needed to get that out of the atmosphere, but here it goes. It is exploding. Excellent. I love it. Now Bill will let us continue with the Gateway Project, but we can't send up the Destiny Module next, even though that's supposed to be next. We need to send up some containers to bring down some trash and deorbit it. We also need to investigate the anomalies. So let's take a look first at our options for how we can deorbit our trash. We have two choices. We have a Progress or we have a Hydra in cargo mode. So here is the Hydra in crew mode, and here's the Hydra in both have the exact same service module down here. So you can see those right there. Now if we get rid of that and we pull off the sides and we remove the cover, that's what you've already seen. You know what the Hydra in crew mode looks like. And over here we'll get rid of that and take off the sides and the cover and that's the Hydra in cargo mode. You can see the base is essentially the same thing except that the trunk is just larger. And we have this same service module on the bottom as we have over here in the cargo mode. It just doesn't have the little trunk on the bottom because uh, once we can get up inside here, let's open that up. And we'll zoom in and you can see that the cargo module just has some space in there to store three large canisters and one smaller canister up on the top. Where of course the crew carrier was just the service module and a return capsule. But honestly, setting up a Hydra in cargo mode, that is total overkill for what I need up there right now. We should set up this progress right here. Uh, this is actually the exact same dimensions relative to the station that we've built so far. This is the exact same dimensions as an actual progress spacecraft. And uh, the progress is also the exact same dimensions because it's basically the same thing as a Soyuz. And the Soyuz sends up three. So can you imagine this thing right here trying to send up three Kerbals? Uh, yeah. I, so that's why I have the Hydra instead of an actual like Soyuz replica because it would just be so completely out of scale. Instead I have my Hydra crew carrier and uh, that relative to the uh, KSS and like if we scaled it into our world it would be uh, f over four meters wide in diameter. So all I need to do now is close up these container bays and go over there, grab uh, a KLS, probably a KLS-2 is going to be good. Uh, grab one of those, stick that underneath there, and we can launch this up there. And then Bob will go out and he'll EVA and put some of his junk in here and we'll deorbit that. And then we can move on to the Destiny module. Once again, we are sitting here waiting for that orbit to go over mission control. However, in this case, I decided to go for a night launch just to demonstrate going the uh, opposite direction. Like normally when I launch, I go in the 45-ish uh, degree heading uh, on my nav ball. And this time I'm still, of course, going to the right side of it, but I have to go up into the right instead of uh, down into the right because it was that incline, the, the opposite side of the incline. You know, you're going the other way. All right, you get the idea. Arg! I ran out of fuel on that last stage just below 40 kilometers, and I like to at least get up to 40 kilometers before I throw the fairing, but I was so close, I, I did it anyway, just slightly short. As long as you're above 40 kilometers, it seems like the air doesn't really have any effect on the ship anymore, and so you can get rid of the fairing and not worry about uh, ferrum aerospace or deadly reentry or any issues like that. So here I am, I'm coming up to the KSS with the progress replica here, and then I'm going to turn... Oh, wait, hold on. I'm getting someone in my ear. Bill? Yeah, Bill? Oh. 
Okay, so Bill says that we have forgotten uh, that stage that you see right there on the bottom of this. It, it, it doesn't have any way to deorbit. So we need to, to turn our progress module, our progress uh, ship here, we need to turn it around, go the wrong way, and then slow down enough to deorbit that stage, and then speed back up again with the service module that's on the progress. Uh, sorry, Bill. Uh, hope everything's okay. You can see we're deorbiting it. It's not a problem. Okay, Bill. Bill's happy with it now. He sees that it has a uh, suborbital trajectory. He's fine. So here we go. We're going to turn on. This is the docking camera. Well, it's not really a docking camera. It's a hull cam. But I'm just showing that it. It can be really cool sometimes to turn your hull cam on, on as you're coming in to do that docking. Uh, it, as long as you're lined up, you can actually leave it that way, and it'll slide its way in there and, and do the docking. So anyway, <laughs> this is now Bob's turn. This is his favorite part. Any EVA is just like a glorious roller coaster ride to him. You know, the best one you've ever been on. That's Bob's EVA experience. Just wants to get out there at every opportunity. So we get over here, and uh, for this, we're just going to swap the canister, the empty one that's inside the progress, and we're going to take that and we're going to swap it with the one that's in the trunk. Uh, now here, I'm having some kind of issue with the animation on these container bays. I don't know what's going on with them, but they like flip open really quick, and then they slowly close when I try to open them. And I want them to stay open, and, and some of the other ones I didn't have any problems at all with them. They would stay open, so I, I don't know what's going on with it. Maybe it's the small size ones? Uh, I can't remember if I've used the bigger ones only. Yeah, I think so far we've only used the bigger ones on the other things. So, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't matter if you can open it and, and reach in there real quick. You can grab the thing anyway. So, uh, like I said, we're down here. We're going to swap this empty one. And we're going to put it down on the back in that trunk. And we're going to get that uh, full one. And we're going to move that one over to the progress and that way later if it ever gets to the point where we need some space or whatever then we can deorbit it and trash be gone right so, but for now I still have the a little bit of space in it and I have a big trunk down on the lower section here of the progress and that one's empty and so we're just gonna keep filling this up and leave it here docked to the station for a while uh, in hindsight, I think I put too many lights on right there. They're kind of creating quite a bit of glare. Uh, maybe I, I suppose what I could do is I could take some of those off and stick them inside that trunk right there. And then I won't have the light rendering issues and I won't have the too many lights there creating just a washed out look. I think that'd be smart. I'm going to do that the next time I'm out there. Okay, so with this taken care of, unless Bob has some other thing he wants to do out here, I don't know, I'll have to ask him, we can head back and get inside the crew capsule and start planning the next mission, which I said was going to be to investigate some of those anomalies. And what do we need to investigate anomalies? We need a gigantic satellite. So let's go build that and put that into a nice high orbit. Alrighty, we are underway. Our AMSAT is going to find out what is going on with those space anomalies. Now, let's see, I'm going to go into a, I'm going to say about a 700 kilometer orbit. I can't actually go any higher than that. Uh, there's enough delta V in the launch vehicle, but I want the launch vehicle to deorbit with a suborbital trajectory. So the actual injection stage there, I want that to uh, deorbit and as a result the delta V that I'm going to need to circularize my orbit has to be completely in the satellite. The satellite only contains about 340 or so delta V. Uh, that means that if I go any higher than say like 750 kilometers uh, I may not have the delta V I need to actually circularize my orbit. Okay, uh, let's see, this looks like it's flying all right. I'm going to switch us over to fast forward mode and we'll uh, get this up in orbit and I'll see you when we're deploying. So we'll switch over here to fast forwarding. I'll just do a little post commentary on this. Well, you heard how I just wanted to get myself into a nice orbit, but still use as much fuel as that lower stage as possible, which means I want to get to like a 15 or 20 kilometer uh, periapsis. 
And uh, I don't think I really did a very good job on angling my craft to get up into that position because what I had to do was uh, once I got up to the uh, apoapsis that I needed, I then had to burn straight back down again. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter because I did have enough fuel to do it and then I decoupled with that lower stage there with uh, some extra fuel still on it. You can see here now what I'm doing is I'm burning back down into the planet. Like I said, I, I was up to 750 kilometers, but I wanted to get my periapsis up. So we do that and then we decouple and off goes the satellite. All right, now we'll go back to my in-game comments. Okay, excellent. We are on our way up to a 750 kilometer orbit, you can see there, with a periapsis of 14 kilometers. That injection stage will now deorbit. It's time to deploy this beauty. Okay, so it is well shielded against any damage from uh, debris or whatever, but it looks like we are safe to deploy here. Okay, so let's begin by opening up the sides. We'll get those to shift their way down and expose our delicate interior. All of our scientific instruments, some of the ones that were destroyed uh, are not present. We had a materials lab, but it was destroyed in an attack on our research and development center. So unfortunately, we don't have a materials bay in here, uh, but we do have everything else. If it's a scientific instrument, we have one on here. All right. Uh, are we in... Where is the sun? There it is right there. Okay, so... We want to make sure that we have our solar panels deployed, pointed toward the sun. So let's turn off the smart ASS, put on our RCS and our SAS, and rotate ourselves toward the sun. And then we will deploy those panels and drink in that juice. All right, here we go. So have those down and we'll bring up our antenna we have some radiators on there let's get those out as well excellent and we'll get our antenna going now that's going to be uh, not pointing at anything in specific anything specific it is searching for uh, anomaly uh, different anomalies and anything that that might be going on strange on the planet let's actually uh, rotate this around and point that down at the planet because that's where all the strange anomalies are and now we can get our solar panels out Excellent. Okay, and we also want to get out our scientific instrument packages. So we have our little scan sat here. We'll bring that out and open our mystery goo containment unit, see if it has anything to tell me about what's going on. We have a dual technique magnetometer. Check for magnetic flux. We'll bring out our scan multi-spectral sensor. Excellent, right there. That looks like it's deploying nicely. And our SAR altimetry sensor. Beautiful. Okay. We can't really see very well in there. I'm gonna flip this around one more time so that we can get a better look actually at the inside. Bring that sunlight down on the interior. Make sure everything looks okay in there. All right, so we have one backup antenna. Let's get that deployed. And we have our various sensors that look like they're all functioning properly. A couple antenna down here for communication back with the planet's surface. And everything in there looks good. All right, now we just need to get this up to our apoapsis and circularize the orbit. So I'm just going to use my mech jeb here to cheat a little and tell it to circularize. There we go. 337 delta V out of 341. Perfect. Oh, it's beautiful. All right. 749 kilometer orbit. There we go. So that's where we're going to stop. 
Okay, Kerbal Alarm Clock says that we have reached close to our apoapsis. So I'm going to point myself toward the node, which will be that one that we created there with MechJeb's Maneuver Planner. And then actually I'm going to turn off the SAS so that if that node moves anywhere afterward, then we won't track it. We'll just keep going in the same direction we were going. Let's get a little bit closer to, oh, you know what? We can't because I don't think that nine seconds is right. Yeah, it is two minutes. Okay, so we need to basically start burning. Yeah, let's start burning now. And uh, so this is going to be a two minute, 30 second burn. Uh, obviously not going to want to sit here staring at that. So I am going to fast forward through that one more time. While we wait, this is probably a good chance to go take a look at the insides. And now the requisite dissection of that satellite. So let's begin right here with, you can see, servo configuration, sides, look at all those controls, dish and arms. Uh, these are leftovers from previously. I don't need those in there. Those are just cluttering things up. I wish it would remove them if they're not needed. Okay, so lots of sides, dish and arms, servos in there, lots of robotics. This vessel was a 217 tons, only 62 dry. So a lot of fuel in there to get that up into orbit. You can see here, 341 delta V, like I said, a tiny little thrust to weight. That's why it took so long to actually finish the circularization, but that's okay. So to get it to launch, I needed to come in here and put some struts connected to the fairing. So I attached some little cubic struts to the fairings from the inside and then put my other struts on the sides here up to those. Uh, you, you wouldn't be able to see that. So I had to scroll in there and take a look real quick. You wouldn't be able to see that. Once I take this away, it just would have looked like that, you know, and there's nothing really to see. So these sides, you saw how it deployed. These are on hinges here and here, which causes these to sort of fold down on top of the lights and the lights poke through and that's why the lights still show. A little bit of cheating, but yeah, I don't care. Uh, and then we have those. So I'm gonna just take the sides off. You saw how those opened up. And down here, just to get a little extension, I had an extra decoupler. So we have a tiny little engine down there. And these are, uh, I think these are from the KSPX mod. They contain liquid and oxidizer, depending upon whether it's a blue or a gray. And so I have those down there piping in some extra fuel down into my Oscar fuel tanks here where I had some monopropellant on there right underneath that engine. And there's our CPU and a little bit of infrastructure just to make it all work. We have the batteries lining the inside. So batteries there and there and there and there. Batteries all over the place. So take the sides off. You can see that CPU in there underneath the struts. Whoa, let's not do that. Control Z, okay. So uh, up here on the top, a big remote tech satellite, a base with a bunch of lights on it. We have different arms. We have those arms and the, the solar panel arms and some uh, sensor arms. And all those were just in here to in one big thing which I could hit and then rotate all of these six out at the same time. Uh, they were all put down in pairs. Let's see, we have ourselves antenna and more antenna and another antenna and some radiators. Oh, I never actually deployed that one when we did it. Okay, whatever. So some science instruments down the side, a massive piston in the middle. We'll pull that out piece by piece. And that was just on a little strut on top of a gyro. And there you have it. Bum ba da ba. All right. And that brings us back to finishing the circularization of our AMSAT. And it will begin analyzing all those anomalies. And then next time we can launch the destiny module. Until then, I will see you later, Kerbinauts.